Now, type of USB transfer. First, so we've got our device, our host, and the software. There is one physical connection. I mean our four cables or five cables. But now, when we want to discuss from the host to a device, we will always discuss through a virtual connection with the on point. Okay? On point is a channel to discuss. That means when a host wants to send something, he will talk to one on point of the device. So to address a device, you will need the address of the device on the on point. Each on point will have some characterization, or I will say some uh, qualities. It's the way it can discuss. And we will see that we have got different on point type. Just keep in mind, on point zero is very special. It's one used for the signalization of the protocol. Okay? Or the other one, you will be able to configure it in your device and say this on point is for this purpose and is working that way. We'll see after how we do that. Okay, so just for remember, multiple on point, different type of on point. Setup, bulk, interrupt, is a chronos. Okay, those wording is not easy to keep in mind. So I will just associate it for you with basic USB device and that way you can fix ID. Setup, Okay, setup is just for the protocol, I would say. Okay, so it's the on point zero. We will use some setup on point. For the other one, we use bulk. What is bulk? Bulk is typically when you are using a USB key. When you are using a USB key, what kind of transfer is there? You are not mm, time constrained. I mean, I transfer a file, do your best guy. It's not something that you need. So you don't have timing constraint. You want to have integrity. Constraint. That means you want to be sure that your file is well transferred. So we will have some um, check of the content, ensure that everything is well arrived and things like that. So keep in mind, bulk is like mass storage. Interrupt. Um, interrupt, it will be like a mouse. So you remember who, who driving the traffic? Do you think when I move the mouse, the uh, information is sent to the host? Uh, any idea? always think it's pulled by the host. That means it's the host who will request to the mouse, oh, do you have something to tell it to me? Do you have move? So interrupt, it will be some things that will be very timing request from the host who will, tell, will ask to the device, do you have something for me? So interrupt, is there something that is timing and with information that should be acknowledged? I will be sure to receive this one, okay? So I will request, request, and request. The last one is a Cronus. So as you can know, there is Cronus inside, so some timing issue. Here is typically for the audio. When you use a USB micro, um, here you need to have something really time constraint. But do you think you are, uh, I will say, a constraint of the content? Any idea? Do you think it's important to miss some audio frame or not? In fact, you don't care. That means when you're recording and you do, if you miss one or two frames, you won't hurt it. What is important is you have you, all the packet at a good speed, I would say. You could imagine this, or it's not clear for you. For the audio, you can miss some sound. You can still understand the, the sentence, I would say. But if you don't have the right timing, you will have some echo, the word will change and something like that. So it's not possible. So it's just an example to fix your ID on the different transfer type, bulk, mass storage, so something you don't mind about the timing, it just do your best effort, but ensure that the data is coherent. Interrupt, it's something that's come regularly, or is pulled regularly by the host, and isochronous, it's something, it's time constraint, and I really don't care if I receive it or not. When I say don't care, in much of the time we should receive it, for sure, but it's not a constraint. On point zero, as I say, it's reserved for enumeration and configuration, so it's a setup. We will really detail this part. Um, what is the enumeration configuration? When you plug a device, the device will need to know, the host, sorry, need to know what is the device capability, what is the device purpose. And for this, at the beginning, it will try to get the descriptors. We will see after. It's a huge structures who will define all the behavior of your device. 
you can see, okay, it's a mouse, how I will connect it, which with on point and which type of on point. All this information will be shared saying the on point zero. Maximum number of on point is 16 bidirectional. Uh, I would say this is in the norm, but that's really depending on your hardware. We'll see that uh, some of our device can go up to uh, eight and some others much more. That's really depending. So it's something that you have to check in the data sheet of the device that you have chosen. So USB pipe connection from host to specific endpoint. So when you want to discuss with a device, it's always through an address, but also in an endpoint. So you need both information to discuss with uh, your final device. So now we'll talk about the basic packet. A uh, basic packet could be seen as the word in a sentence, okay? Now we'll see to do a sentence, we will need to put a specific word before and then other one after. The first word we will talk about is a token packet. So a token packet is composed of some synchronized uh, field, so it's just a toggle from zero to one, and then a PID, so packet field information, would take which kind of token is it. Then we've got the address and the endpoint. So through those both parameters, I'm sure that this token will be received by one device in my, one, in my, in my network USB and in one endpoint in this device. It's okay for you? Then we've got a CRC, just to ensure that all those information are good, and the end of package signal. Um, also, I miss, but in the PID, there is four bits for the value and there is four bit mirror it just to check or ensure there is no corruption. Just to show you there is two mechanisms to ensure this packet is correct, the PID coherency and the CRC. Then we've got another word with it start of frame packet. This is a special one who is just sent on the network regularly by the host just to, I will say, do the timing. For the full speed and the low speed, this start of frame packet will come every one millisecond at any time. Always, always. If you miss it, you don't send it during three milliseconds, that means the host is sleeping. Okay? So it's really something that's come a lot on the network. So you will see when you use a USB analyzer, you remove the start of frame packet because they are coming a lot. And in full speed, it's low speed, it's one every one millisecond, but when you are in high speed, so the IS on, it was 125 microseconds. So it's micro frame. So other word we can use will be the data packet. So the data packet, just to synchronize, a PID who just say what kind of data is here, and after the data we want to send. A CRC and an end of packet. So you can see that in this world, you don't have any address or endpoint. So it will be first a token packet that will be go on the networks and say, okay, I'm talking to this endpoint, to this address. Then we will send some data packet to this one. Now you started to see the transaction. Transaction will be something like, there is a token packet who will say what happened after, and after we've got the data that's coming on the bus. You got it? This is really important. This is a tr USB transaction, the basic one, which is a different block. Now we've got the world. And we've got the last word that is important, is the acknowledge packet. It's a packet who say, okay, hack, knack, stole, net. In fact, it will be, okay, I will send you something, I send you something, and there is another word who say, okay, I have received it. It's correct, so I will put a hack. I haven't received it, the CRC is not correct, I put a knack. So now you can see that using this word, we can do some transaction. And we will see the different transaction regarding what kind of traffic we've got. Remember, we've got bulk, we've got some isochronous, and we've got some interrupt. For all of them, we are using this wording to do the transaction, and we'll see what kind of transaction we will do. It's clear for everybody? It's really important because it's the basics words. If it's not, we can come back later, but don't, hesi don't hesitate. So, I come back about this token packet and what kind of token packet we've got. We've got out in start of frame setup. 
Okay, something important in the USB, it's the wording out and in. It's always from the host point of view. We are host-centric. Sometimes it can drive you crazy if you are not used with this. That means on the device, when I'm talking about out, it's something that I receive. <laughs> it's not logical, but not natural. <laughs> but you have to think that way because we will always talk about a how token. So a how token, that means it will be a traffic that will be generated from the host to the device. But if you are inside the device, you will see some how packet, that means something that I will receive. Okay, but keep in mind, in and out, it's al always from the host point of view. So the type of this token packet, this word, we can say, okay, what will happen after it's something that will be out? That means it's something that will be sent from the host to the device. What's happened after is a in? That means it's something that's coming from the device to the host. We can have the start of frame, so the specific frame we just on the net from the host. And the setup, this one is just for the configuration to the on point zero. We already talked together. A setup packet will be always sent first by the host. As you can see, everything is, I will say, driven by the host. So it will be the host that will use those tokens. Then we've got the data packets. So when we get a data packet, we've got two kind of packets. So now we are not in the say what we are doing. We're just sending or receiving data. We put some data on the bus or we read data on the bus. But these data have two types, zero and one. And we will see that on some traffic, we always send data first a data zero, then a data one, then a data zero, then a data one. We toggle this flag just to ensure we don't miss one frame. You could imagine what is the purpose of this. It's sometimes you don't know if, how many frames you will come. And if you see twice arrive data zero, say, okay, there is a problem, I miss one data one. We will see after in the protocol the, the purpose of this. For the high speed communication, there is some additional data, data two and M data, but I won't cover this in this presentation. About the uncheck, so hack, NAC, I think you know what is it. Uh, stall, that means not supported, I would say in high speed and full speed. Um, low speed and full speed, sorry. And then you've got the not yet, this is just for the high speed. Uh, not yet, that means uh, I'm not ready, uh, try later. For the moment it's not possible, but that's not meaning it's not possible at all. That's the difference with the stall. And then we've got some special with error, split and ping. Um, I will have a couple of words of, of word on this, but for the moment it's not so important. So, okay, we come back on the address on how we allocate the address when we plug in it. Uh, after we will go in the transaction sending this word. So the maximum number of devices is 127. You know, address zero is for the new one, not for the host. <laughs> Okay, it will be for the device before a uh, host attribute uh, an address to it. So, we will see what happens when I plug a new device. When a new device is plugged, the hub will see something, I will say. Okay, so do you think the hub will warn the host? In fact, no. Always saying it's host-centric. It's the host that will request the, to, the, to the hub do you have something new? <laughs> so it will be always the host that will, hey, is there something changed? I just insist on this just to keep in mind, it's always the host that is pulling the things, okay? The device don't change something, oh, it's not working, oh, okay, I received something, no. It's the host that requests information from the different device or different hub. Okay for you? So the host require, is there something changed? On the host, say, yes, there is something on the port zero. I see something that have been connected. So the host, we say, okay, turn on the port zero. That means power this, and let's get some information from it. So first, it will be with the address zero. We only have one device with the address zero at one time, and it will be temporary, okay? Then it will set the address 4, 
to this one. It just look which address is, I will say, free. It will send it, and after we've got these networks. So this is dynamically, if you remove one, it will let the address free for another one and such kind of things, okay? So nothing really complicated. It's okay for you the, how we do the address? Couple of words of start of frame. So this one is sent periodically. One millisecond interval for the low speed, full speed, and 125 microseconds for the high speed. So it's a base standing reference. Okay, keep in mind we don't have any line for the clocking, so it's important to have some synchronization or kind of synchronization. I already told you about the fact we've got some device with internal oscillators which can achieve, I will say, the, um, the good quality to do some USB transfer. But this device will use this start of frame to resynchronize and to ensure it was well aligned. So it's really important for us to have this. And so you can see in full speed, you've got such kind of rhythm, high speed this one. And the suspend command is detected by no state of frame during three milliseconds. That means your PC don't do anything. If you go in hibernation, you, start, you stop sending the start, the start of frame. Your device is aware about it. So it can do some low power management or say, okay, I don't have anything to do for the moment and waiting that it was wake up again by the host. Or it can wake up the host. There is a capability of this. You know this because when your PC is in hibernation, you can still put, uh, um, put something on your keyboard and you will wake up your PC or you move your mouse and your PC wake up. So you've got always the capabilities to wake up the host. So now we have defined our words, token, data, and the unchecked packet. Let's talk about transaction regarding the what kind of transfer we'll do. So control the chronos interrupt. Bulk remembers the associated example. Master edge, yes, so you just want to be as much as possible. So there is no bandwidth book by the host for this. The, for, for the isochronous, where you've got a huge constraint of time on the interrupt, where you've, you've got some timing constraint, the host will book some bandwidth for this traffic, okay? And if there is some places for the bulk, it will put it there. But it could happen that there is no, and you have to wait. Let's imagine you are recording some audio on the USB, okay, and at the same time you do some file transfer. You will privilege the, the audio with the isochronous transfer regarding the file transfer, because you don't mind about this bulk. Okay? So it's just important to understand you the constraint of these different type of endpoints, because when you will define yours, if you are not using the standards one from the, the, from the standardization, you can define your own, and this is one of these constraints. Okay? So, hack next tooling yet, I already talked about this. Okay, now we started to define a transaction. So, as I say, the transaction will be all be organized that way. A token, then some data, then an uncheck. So file transfers, only if USB have bandwidth are already, and we want to have error handling. That means we want to be sure that our file is well transferred. And it's not available in low speed. In low speed, you only have some um, interrupt transfer, not this one. So first, we will have a token. Token always sent by the host. That means it's the host that started to talk. In this token, there is the address and the on point. Okay? So, first, the host will put on the network, or the USB network, okay, now it's an in transaction for this on point to this device. And then the device will receive it and will put on the bus, okay, this is the data. You remember, an in transaction is from the host point of view, that means the host wants to receive something. So the, the, the device will put the data, first the data zero, and the next one, it will put a data one. And it will receive a hack from the host to say, okay, I receive your packets. Okay? The, the device could also say, NAC, uh, no, I'm not ready to receive an in token. There is something that's not working, we'll see after. 
we can see answer stall, that meaning, no, no, I don't support this kind of transfer. Do something else or miss this on point, it's not working like this, my device is not configured for this. So here, yeah, just basic one. So a first transaction, the host want to receive something. So we will put the token on the bus. The device will receive it because he knows it's for its address on its own point. He will put the data zero first and then expect it to receive a hack from the host. That means it's finished. Another example, so here, yeah, so it was correct and it's only a hack. Now what happened, we are in a little bit in trouble. Imagine we send a packet, the device send the next one, so we switch from data 0 to data 1, just to ensure we don't have lose something. But it was not received for a reason or another on the host side. So what kind of timeout on the host say, okay, knack, there is something that is not correct in what I received. The CRC is not correct or, I don't know, there is something in the PID, for example, it's not a data 0, it's something I don't catch, so it could a request a NAC. That means that the device will resend again the same packets. So on the device side, when you send something, you will erase it from your FIFO or from your buffer as soon as you receive the hack. If you haven't received a NAC, you should be able to send it again. You got it? This is hard by the hardware. It's just for you to understand what could happen, what you could see with a, a USB analyzer. So, device no receive. So, here yeah, it started again. Okay, the host requests a new packet because they haven't received the, the previous one or the previous one was not correct. Then, he receive it, but he don't receive it, he don't manage to get it, so he will request it again, and again, and again, until he managed to receive it and have a hack. The other possibility is to answer a stall, that means the on point is not configured. It's not possible to do this kind of traffic, so it's a way to suspend. So here we have described describe the bulk in transition. So that means we receive some information about the file from the device to the host. Now the bulk transaction out. That means from the host point of view, I write a file in my USB key. So here you can see first a token from the device to say, OK, device, you will receive something. When the device receives it, or can read this token, then the, the host will put on the bus the different data. And then it up to the device to say, OK, I acknowledge I will receive your packets, or no, there is something wrong in your packets, I'm not ready, or I can't support it with a stool, and not yet, that means uh, not for the moment, wait a little bit, but this is for the high speed. So again, you can see it's quite similar, I will say, but I think it's always host-centric. A hard packet, we put the data and just receive the hack. So not so much complicated. So you can see the constraint. We've got some acknowledgement. We are through the integrity of the data. Now when it's not working fine, that means there is some corruption. Okay, we send a hack. That means again, it will send again the same data one. And for the stall, when it's not prepared, on the high speed, it's just a wait. Uh, just a couple on, of words on this. Um, so, why in high speed we've got such kind of not yet? It's just to avoid to try to do many transfer. For example, in high speed, so you prepared a huge bulk, you send it, and in fact, the, the purpose is not ready. So, it's just a not yet. You take all the bandwidth and it was waste. When, we, when the host will receive a not yet, it will stop sending this bulk. It will just send a ping. I will say an empty packet special, just say, are you available now? And you save the bandwidth. For the purpose of this not yet, it's just to say, for the moment I can't, but don't take all the bandwidth and after we will use a ping just to say, okay, now the bandwidth, I'm ready and I can send all the packets. 
So data acknowledgement, I think we already, so two things, the CRC and the PID complementary value. So device and the hack when it's successful, uh, NAC when it's not uh, ready to accept or if there is a problem, stall, it stops the transmission, so it's really, it's not supported, I would say. And, um, okay, so other things. And think about the toggle data PID transfer. You always switch from data zero to data one. So this was for the bulk. Any question on this? No? Okay. So now we are talking about isochronous. So here, no hack, no handshake, because we don't care if it's received or not. Or when I say we don't care, we, we at least some receive some data for sure, but there is no error management. So here with time bases, so one packet per frame, so data zero, and up to three packets per micro frame. So micro frame, you, you remember the, the size we've seen to before. And it's not supported in load speed also. Typically audio playback, audio recording. So here, it's a little bit different from the transaction syntax. So always host-centric, think about it. You put the token in, okay, I'm ready to receive data. And the device just put the data, okay? I would say, okay, there is no, no much example there, it's just here. Here, just receive. Here, we request some data, we don't receive it. Okay, we miss a packet. But it's timing constraint, so we have to receive. This is a uh, in transaction. On the house, it's much more simple. You just say, how to push the data, how to push the data. It's up to the device to get the good reason to get it. It's okay for you? Now the interior transaction, so for the mouse, the keyboard, so data is read periodically, limited packet size, that means we don't have huge transfer with such kind of thing. You can custom it uh, to have some very custom size of maximum you can send, but I don't remember, it was, I think it's 64 bytes, something like that, but I don't remember, not sure about this. About the pool interval, one millisecond, remember why? start of frame, always the same currency, but you can also always say that it's not to the one millisecond, you just want to be pulled to two milliseconds, 10 milliseconds. It's up to the device to say, I want to be pulled at this reason. It's up to you because think this one, this transaction will book some bandwidth on your USB traffic. Often we don't mind because we often use just one device on our on STM32, but you could imagine if you have many things to plug together, you could have some constraints. So always think that when you are using USB, if you plug a host on many things on this, it works less, less well than when you have only one device. We don't think about it because we don't see the impact, but it has one. So maximum 90% of one man with reserve for is a Cronus, okay. So interrupt and interrupt and isochronous can take 90% of the bandwidth. Um, and it's available on all the speed. So low speed, it's mainly for setup and the interrupt just for this one. Error detection and correction because you, you want to see if it's not working. So translation, the both are on the same. So here again, so regularly the host will put uh, in token, we'll say, okay, I want to receive some data. It will put the address, it will put the on point, and we know this on point is um, interrupt on point. So we will receive the answers quickly. And then we will receive data zero, then data one, and then we can uncheck, say, okay, I receive it or I not receive it. You can do a NAC stall, and for the out, it's the same in the other way. It's okay for you? So now we've got some in transition. I want to receive something. It's in the data one. Then on the next one, it will do some, sorry, some data toggling. So just say, okay, first the data zero, then data one. And here we can see an example of, we have both the one because we have a NAC there. So it's still the data one that will be sent until we receive a hack. Okay, this is the purpose of this data zero, data one. You ensure that you keep the data inside.
So always keep in mind also, from the device point of view, the data, or host also, is keeping in mind, uh, keeping in memory, sorry, until you receive a hack for this transaction. For the output, I would say not so much difference. So, the control setup, it's a little bit more complicated because it's a transaction will be composed of three transactions. <laughs> so we'll see it's a transaction, we started with a setup transaction, then some data transfer transaction, and then a last uncheck. So first, it's similar to the bulk, it just put a setup, so it's a special token. It's always on the on point zero, because this is for signalization. And then it will be an out. That means first we will have a setup transaction. I mean the host will say it's a setup transaction. Then it will send the data to the device who will acknowledge it. This is a first step that is needed. Okay. Now I will say a complete setup transaction is composed of three phases. This setup one, some data transfer, and after a uncheck. So, as I say, setup, data, hack. It's always such kind of thing, okay? To the end point zero, transaction. Here, just the error that are still the same. So, setup, you remember, I said for signalization, when you plug something on your PC, first, you try to get what are the configuration of the device. Is it a mouse? Is it a keyboard? Is it, I don't know, a, a USB key? And if you don't manage, to get this information, you will say, okay, I don't know this one, I ignore this device. You know this Windows, I think you've already seen it. And it's in the case that you don't, if the device don't answer after three setup, so three setup to get the information, you will say, okay, I ignore it. Okay? So here is a complete setup transaction. So there is a setup stage, data stage, on a state stage. Okay, so for the moment we have seen the word with token, data, and acknowledge, not acknowledgement. Then we see some transaction, bulk, things uh, interrupt, and isochronous. And then we've got the setup, which is a little bit different. It started with a setup transaction, who will put some of that. Then some data stage, I mean some in-out bulk transaction, that means some transfer that will be just for the signalization on a stage transfer, which is an in-out bulk, just to say, okay, everything is fine. So for the setup, it's really one upper. It's okay for you? It's a point that is not always easy to handle. So for the control rights, in the setup, we will say what happened after. And in fact, we will say, okay, what happened after is something I will send you some data. So we will put in the setup, we'll see after the syntax, we'll say, okay, in the data stage, it will be an out thing. It's something that will come from the host to the device, and we'll also set here the length of the data that will be sent. Okay, and for the control read, the same things. Then you could have some setup, we will just send an information to the device, and you don't expect it to receive something or to send something else. So, what a control seconds write? That means it's a setup and you want to write something to the device. First, a setup stage, so a setup token. Then a data zero, which describes that we will have some out transaction after, and what are the lengths, the number of data that will be received. And the device just say hack. Then we've got the data stage, so now, okay, we, we are say, aware of the device that we will send in data and then we'll send the different packet with the toggling and just receive hack. Once we have received all the data, we have some state stage. That means something to understand if what's happened before is okay. Have you received all the data that expected? Are you happy with what you received? So it's a in transfer, that means you want to receive something from the device, and it will send some empty data. It will send some data with a length of zero. And for him, he say hack, that means, okay, everything was fine previously. If there is an issue, he could send something there, or here he can just send a stall that is not supported, or a hack if there is something that's not working during the transfer. Okay, so it was described here. 
how token. So I think I already told you about this. So at the end, just send a zero lens packet. Just to say all this transaction is okay. The data stage was okay, I received the information, it was well for me. As I say, told that the command is not supported. And the NAC, the device is still working on the command that something it's not finished. So this was the control right. Control read is quite similar, but now it's data that's coming from the device. So typically the get descriptors, when you want to know what are the capabilities of the device, it will start with this kind of transaction. Always started with a setup, with the data zero with information to say, okay, it will be the uh, read sequences, and I expect to receive this amount of data, receive a hack, and then you've got the transfer of the data with the data, data toggling on always some error or uncheck for the status. And the last one could be just to a setup, but without any data to transfer. Could happen that you just have to send information and don't expect it to receive something from the device or to send something to the device. So here yeah, it's quite simple, just the setup, but you still have state stage step, okay, to say that what happened before was okay. Um, oh, this one I will skip, not very interesting. Okay, so let's come back to this setup package and what there is inside this data zero. And what is inside, it describes what are the data stage, what kind of transaction we are doing during this setup. Okay, so we've got some request type, just to see if it's host to device, device to host. So just regarding this, you know what is, I will say, the data stage uh, sense. Is it an in or out transaction? Do you expect it to send something to the device or to receive something from the device? Then, so after you've got some type transfers and I will say some request format, and here you've got the length on two byte, who will say the amount of data that you expected to receive or to send, depending on the first parameters. Then the different requests possible, so it's defined. You've got some care status, GLED status, set, set address. So we already seen that. It will be at the descriptor, you connect. So then they all say, okay, your address is this one. For example, when you do a set address, you don't expect it to send anything else because you've got everything there. Get descriptors, set descriptors, get configuration, get interface, and synchronous fan. Here is a, an example now, at the beginning of this chapter I just saw you. So here now we should better understand it. It's not so easy that now it will be clear for you for the first step, but okay. We know we've got some transfer. will be complete with a transaction. So it's a setup one. So it will start it with, a, with a setup token, okay? So a setup transaction on the length is zero. So that means we will have no data to transfer. So it's a, the much more simpler we've defined. That means I will just do a setup and then I will have done check. No data to transfer before. I haven't lost you. It's okay. So now let's see. So we've got again, first, the token. So the token is coming from the host to the device. as all the token because it's a host centric. We say, okay, we are talking to the address 24 and the endpoint zero. For sure it's a setup, so we are discussing with the endpoint zero. We know that. Then here the data with the set configuration, we just produce like data that are sent directly to the device. And we receive a hack from the device. So here we have done the setup part of the transaction. Okay? And then as it was zero length, there is no data transfer. We just have, we just maybe come back on this. We have this one set up, we have seen, and now we just have this state stage. Okay, so in packets. So let's check if it's what we've got in our traces. Here it was bien, it was bien. It was well uh, in transition, okay, with no, no, no length, so we just a token, then it was answered by the device who sent data with zero byte. 
This is the acknowledgement of our setup. Okay? Do you feel more comfortable now to try to read, I will say, some traces? Yeah? <laughs> more or less? Um, okay. This is an example where it's stole. That means you do the setup transaction and receive a stole. But no so much experience. Um, just a couple of work on the special split and ping. Um, you know, this is some token we have seen before on advocates for high speed, I will tell you. Just a little word about this one. So the split is when you've got a host and a device who are talking in high speed. Sorry, a host and a hub. <laughs> a host and a hub are talking in high speed, okay? Very quick. And then you've got a device which is just a full speed. Um, okay, so I have to split, I will say, the traffic. That means I don't receive in all micro frame all the, the information for this device, but I will receive just a split of the traffic, and then it will be reassembled by the hub which will transfer it. This token is to say, okay, split the traffic for this device because it will need to receive less speedy. You got it? Just to give you the idea. But for sure, um, we don't support the hub in our STM32 uh, stack. That means you can configure as a device, as a host, and you have all the stack for this, but the hub is not supported in our device. About the ping, I think I already told you a little bit. It's just to prevent to have some bandwidth waste because you try to communicate in bulk. The device is not ready. Stop sending a huge packet. You just send a little packet. And when it's ready, I started again to send my huge bulk. Okay. About the bandwidth constraints, so here you've got the different speed and you get what is supported, so interrupt, and the maximum packet size that you can do. So in full speed, 10% is reserved for the control transfer and 90% could be reserved for the periodic transaction is a chronos of interrupt. For sure, if there is none of them, all the band could be taken by the bulk. Okay? On, on the high speed, the reservation is more important with the uh, transfer, uh, control transfer, but as it's speedy, the bandwidth is still bigger for sure. 